Hello, and welcome to Mesquite Living Waters Fellowship's Wednesday's Word Series. We invite you now to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's message. See Stephen here with your Wednesday Word. Today, at first, I have a praise report of healing in myself. For over a year, I had a, a lump in my right breast. As many women would know, that's not a very good sign. And uh, I prayed about it, beseeched the Lord, asked him to heal me, and uh, not much was happening. And so I thought, well, you know, <laughs> I haven't gone to the elders. I haven't been anointed with oil. I haven't gone to my brethren and confessed what's happening with me and that I need their help. So I did all those things. And for over a year, we did them. We stayed it. I confessed that I was going to be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood to save me, and I believe it. And uh, every month, it got a little better and a little better. And finally, it was gone. And I went and had a mammogram. And uh, some other kind of test, I forgot. But <clears throat> anyway, the mammogram come back, and there's nothing there. Completely healed. And so, for all you folks that have ailments of different things, make sure you go the proper way. See your elders. See your brethren. Those that uh, you believe are spiritual in your congregations. And if you're not in a congregation, get in one. That's where we find our harbor of safety in this wife. As that year went on, I watched as different people would come up to get prayed for after services, different things. And I watched their reactions. You know, sadly, you know, a lot of times I didn't see much joy, not much confidence shown that God was really their healer. And I thought about it and I prayed about it and I thought, this is, this is not so. Lord, we're to be in the cleft of your hand. You're gonna hold us right in your hand and you're gonna make sure we're safe and you're gonna make sure that we're comfortable and that we are getting everything we need. I was thinking, you know, it's just like when you pick up a little baby chicken or a little duck and you hold them in your hands and you keep them warm and safe in your hands, they'll settle right down and, and go to sleep. <laughs> no more peeping, no more nothing. When God holds us, he holds us close to his heart where we can hear his heartbeat and we can feel the warmth of his body warming our souls. And that's the way it should be. And it should be with great joy and love and affection that uh, we receive all these things. So if you need a healing, ask your Savior. He already paid for it 2,000 years ago. You're saved because of it. You can be healed also. Now, for my lesson, I have two verses in four different re renderings. It's uh, Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21. Now I'm gonna, this first one is out of the Thompson Chain reference, which is a King James Version. So here we go, verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Kind of short, kind of, you know, King James-like. <laughs> now the next one, you'll see some differences, some uh, further explanation of the Greek words. This is uh, by Kenneth Wiest, expanded translation. Verse 20, for the commonwealth of which we are citizens has its fixed location in heaven, out from which we, with our attention withdrawn from all else, 
are eagerly awaiting to welcome the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to receive him to ourselves, who shall transform this body of ours, which has been humiliated by the presence of indwelling sin and by death and decay, so that it will be conformed to his body of his glory, this in accordance with the operation of him who is able to bring unto subjection to himself all things. Well, that was kind of wordy, but there's some things here that are, are interesting. Our attention is fixed on the Lord. We're not looking at the world. We don't care about worldly things, but our attention is fixed on the Lord. Remember that when you're praying for anybody. When you're praying for them, don't think about what you're going to have for lunch. Think about how the Lord loves that soul and how he wants to save them, how he wants to heal them, how he wants to bless them spiritually, that we can take in uh, manna from heaven, the food of God to our soul. So there's some pretty good things in there, and here we are. We're going to do an emphasized rendering now from Rotherham's. Verse 20, for our citizenship is in the heavens. Hath its rise. <laughs> now, rise, what does that mean? Well, it means subsist or substance. And the definition for that according to Rotherham, was taken out of the Webster's Dictionary so we could go back and find out what it is. <coughs> to come to a halt, remain, to come to a stand, akin to a stare, persist, continue, to hold true, to be logically conceivable as the subject of true statements. You're the subject of the true statement. God said, I'm going to heal you. You're the subject, and you're going to be healed. Or whatever. Whatever it is you're asking for. <clears throat> Wherefore, a savior, savior, also we do ardently await. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transfigure our humble body into conformity with his glorified body according to the energy wherewith he is able to subdue unto himself all things. All things. Everything. You're not leaving anything out. Next one is the Amplified Bible by Zondervan as a publishing outfit. But we are citizens of the state, commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. And from it also, we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as Savior. Who will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform to and be like the body of his glory and majesty by exercising that power which enables him even to subject everything to himself. I also would add, and at that time, every knee will bow Every tongue will confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. We have a heavenly citizenship. In uh, Revelations, uh, 21, 27, but nothing 
that defiles or profanes or is unwashed shall ever enter it, nor anyone who commits abominations that is unclean, detestable, morally repugnant, things or practices, falsehoods, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Boy, if you're not saved, what's keeping you? What's holding you back? You better think about your destination. In Revelations 22, 15, this is what they call the exclusions. But without are the dogs and those who practice sorceries, magic arts, and impurity, the lewd adulterers, and the murderers, idolaters, and everyone who loves and deals in falsehood, untruth, error, deception, cheating. Friends, we got to get rid of that stuff in our lives. Are we cheating on God? Oop, I ain't going to go to church this Sunday. I'm going to go to a football game. Uh, what are we doing here? Let's think about what we're doing. Let's honor God. Let's love God with our whole life. If you want to read something to really edify yourself, you can read 1 Peter 1, chapters 4 through 8. It's a wonderful blessing to us Christians. And if you're not a Christian, you can be. You just have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. He died, was raised <clears throat> again on, after three days. He's with God on the right hand of the Father. His blood paid for you, paid for your salvation. We ask that you would uh, think about those things. Even if you're a Christian, these are good things to meditate on and to thank the Lord about, to be happy. In Jesus' precious name, we've offered this to you today. Take it and be blessed. Thank you.